everybody. It is the end of February. Actually, it's March. When this goes up, it will be March. But let's look back at February favorites. I have a little collection of random stuff and I'm just gonna jump right into it today. So the first thing was, it was Valentine's Day during February and my Valentine's present from Michael, which was on my wish list, it wasn't like just a random gift, is this guy. This is, it's not in a case, this is a, the new Kindle Paperwhite. I've been wanting one of these forever because wherever I go, I need to have a book with me. I do have the Kindle app on my iPhone, but when you sit outside, as I frequently do, especially now that the weather's getting nice, the glare off the phone or off my iPad makes it really difficult to read outside. So this guy, and what's great about the paper white is that it also lights up at night. So I can keep this next to my bed, read it at night, but mostly it lives in my purse so that I just always have a book handy. It's a little easier to read on than um, my iPhone and the battery on this thing lasts forever. And the two books that I read in February that I recommend, the first one was the latest in a series. The series is The Rivers of London. It's based in London. It's obviously paranormal. That's my first, I shouldn't say obviously, but that is my favorite genre. And the latest book in that series, The Hanging Tree, finally got released. It was supposed to be released here in the United States back last summer, but there were some delays with the publisher. So it was released in the United States just this month. And it's, it was a very good book. But if you've not read the series, I highly recommend starting with the first one, which is, I think it's called The Rivers of London. But I will link the um, first book in the series in the description box. And then the second book that I read started out great, kind of got a, dragged a little in the middle, and then at the end, just everything tied together. And it's the book Big Little Lies. HBO started a little series on it just this month. I haven't seen it yet. I really wanted to read the book first. And the book itself is set in Australia. I know the TV series is set somewhere in the San Francisco Bay Area. But um, it's basically about the dynamics of kindergarten moms, elementary school moms, and their husbands, and the kids. It's, it's obviously a little bit hyperbole. I mean, there's a murder, but um, having lived through elementary school with two kids, there's definitely uh, some kernels of truth in that book. So I highly recommend the book. And now I'm gonna go check out the TV series. That's it for books. Now let's talk about the only um, non-makeup or skincare item I have, and they are these earrings. How fun are they? These are new, one of the new spring releases from Bobble Bar. Um, I just love these with like a black or a gray or a white shirt, just this fun pop of color. But because of the neon and all the different colors, you can wear these with anything. And because they're basically just string, they're very, even though they're big earrings, they're very lightweight. So they're really fun. And I'm really enjoying wearing these uh, this month and going forward. Now let's dive into the two skincare products I have which will shock you because neither are Colleen Rothschild. So you know I'm a huge Colleen Rothschild fan, but her stock has been out of stock for a really long time. Aveda sent me these two skincare items and I've never had great luck with Aveda skincare, so I don't know what I was thinking trying this. It could have gone horribly wrong. Luckily, it went wonderfully right. They are both from their new wedding mask um, collection. The line is called Tula Sara. There are these funky little pots here. The first one is the Wedding Mask Eye. Just Wedding Mask Eye, tiny little pot. Very thick, heavy eye cream. You only use it at night and it's supposed to make you look refreshed and awake. And I thought that was pretty, those were some pretty bold claims. But it's really true, it really does work. It's too rich to use during the day. It's a very rich, thick, heavy um, cream. I use a little skincare spatula to get it out and I just pat it on under here and all the way up to the top of my eye. I don't really put it so much on my eyelid. But then the actual, they call it a wedding mask, but it's really just a night cream. It's not really a mask per se. Again, similar concept, very heavy, thick cream. This one has kind of, I mean, it's a generally clean odor, but it kind of has some sort of spiciness to it. And again, it's very thick, it's very moisturizing. I think if you have oily skin, you might not like this, but my skin sucked it up and I do think it looks as good, if not better, than when I've been using my Colleen Rothschild stuff. So very pleased with it. So that's it for skincare. Now I will briefly mention my new favorite foundation. It's the Shiseido Sinker Skin Glow. I'm wearing it in the shade N2 today. Um, definitely a great foundation for those with dry skin. I've heard from a few people with oily skin, not so much. So if you're not sure, either grab a sample or if you have oily skin, you might wanna go with the original formula, which is just this um, 
Synchro Skin No Glow, but it's got great coverage, lasts a long time, and lately I've been adding a little pump of my IT Cosmetics CC Cream with a pump of the Shiseido, which is what I did today. And there's just something magical about the IT Cosmetics CC Plus Cream. It mixes with every foundation beautifully. So I, don't, I just, I like that. It gives you just a little bit more of a satin finish and a little bit heavier coverage. So I like that combination together. So my new favorite. Rest of this is all makeup. Um, I'll stick with face products. Not a big surprise that this one, the Makeup Revolution Skin Kiss, specifically in the shade Peach Kiss. This is the most amazing highlighter. Can you see? I am, am I lit? Do I have cheekbones today? It's just such a pretty color. There is another shade. I think it's more gold and a little lighter. Um, but this peach is just such a universally flattering shade. It kind of warms you up and still lights you up. And I'm actually wearing it on my cheekbones and as the lid color today. It's a versatile little thing. And it's basically a drugstore product. It's at Ulta, but on the drugstore side, it is really an inexpensive product. You get a lot of product and it's really pretty packaging. So I like that. And then the other face product I'm not actually using on my face. I've had this a while. It's from Tarte. It's the Tartist Contour Palette and um, Huge Mirror. And then you have these shades in here. And I actually don't use it on my face. I feel like the contour shades are too warm for me. I have been loving this as an eyeshadow palette. I use the brow bone. There's a matte brow bone shade, which also works nicely as a lid shade, or this works great as a lid shade. Um, I use the mid-tone brown in the crease, deepen up the corner with the, whoops, wrong direction, with the uh, darker brown. That's what I did today. And then there, this has, this one in the middle has a little bit of shimmer because it's technically a highlight. So you can use that for your inner corner or for your lid color. But today I jazzed it up a little bit because I'm going out later tonight with the um, skin kiss on my lids. But a handy little thing. And then, you know, if you want to tie it all in together, you could use this blush. Um, as your blush, which I've done, or uh, not today, or you know, you could kind of like blend it out in the crease a little if you want a little more of a mauve or mauve look to your eyes. It's a fun little palette. I, I really enjoy it quite a bit. The blush I'm wearing today gets an honorable mention. I just picked it up, so it really can't be a favorite. But it's from the new um, flower. It's from Flower Beauty at Walmart, or you can actually order directly from Flower Beauty now, which is kind of cool. And it's their hibiscus, I want to say, color. Unfortunately, I dropped it on the bathroom floor today and it shattered into a million pieces. I'm going to go back and get another one. It's a beautiful, glowy, warm, lighter tone pink. It's gorgeous. Got to give that an honorable mention. Um, I have one other eye product to talk about. I've mentioned it before. It is the CoverGirl Queen Eyeliner. Queen is a different line from CoverGirl. Um, it's not that easy to find in stores, so I do recommend just ordering it directly. I have been using this in the shade Cabernet. I'm wearing it today. This goes on, feels like, and performs as well as the Estee Lauder Double Wear Pencils, but this is a CoverGirl product, so quite a difference in cost. I have not tried any of the other shades that this comes in, but I am definitely going to pick some more up because they're so creamy and once they set, they do not budge. They're beautiful, beautiful products. Love this collection. And then the last bit are lipsticks or lip products. So firstly, let's talk about, there's a lot on my lips. I have the Wet n Wild New Gel uh, Liner, lip liner all over. Then on top of that, I have a liquid lipstick that I actually really, really like. And it is from, I've talked about it before you've heard about it. It's the Wet n Wild, it's got a long name, Megalass Liquid Catsuit. Many of you told me to go check this out. I listened to you, I did. My favorite shade so far is Rebel Rose. I have that on now, but I also, my second favorite shade is Nudist Peach, which is a really nice shade. And then my third favorite is Think, no, Pink Really Hard. Um, I do have a fourth shade, it's a berry something. I don't love that shade, on me personally, it wasn't exactly what I thought it would look like. I'm gonna swatch all of these for you. Um, it, it, it translated a little differently on my face than it did in the bottle, so that's okay. Here they are all swatched from top to bottom. Rebel Rose, Nudist Peach, and um, Pink Really Hard. And they are the only lipstick, liquid lipstick I've tried, or it is the only liquid lipstick I've tried that doesn't dry down my lips that doesn't feel awful, that doesn't flake in a strange way. 
um, that just wears off evenly, but it lasts a really long time. It's not uncomfortable and my lips aren't on fire the next day. Um, I don't know if I wore it like seven days in a row, that may be different, but I usually wear it about three or four days in a row and it's been fine. Now on top of that, I've been looking for a dupe for the Jouer Longwear Lip Gloss. Mine is in the shade Skinny Dip, I believe, and I'm going to swatch it. It's very pigmented. It's very beautiful. It smells like vanilla frosting or caramel. So you can see it's very, whoops. I'm gonna have lipstick all over me. It's very shimmery and it is a little on the pricey side. So I've been trying to find a similar concept because with these liquid lipsticks, I do like putting a gloss over it or some kind of a more emollient lip topper just to kind of counteract the dryness. So I've been trying the L'Oreal Infallible Lip Gloss in Petal. It is not exactly the same. It doesn't have the opacity as the, um, Jouer lip gloss, and this one's a little pinker. But if you look at it in the light, I'm pointing directly at the L'Oreal one. There you go. It's close enough. And when you put it on your lips, it actually wears a little nicer and blends a little better than the very opaque and very metallic Jouer lip gloss. So I've really been enjoying the um, L'Oreal Infallible, got a long name, lip gloss in petal and that's what I have on all over on top of that. So those were my favorites for February 20, what year is it? 17. We're into March. March 1st uh, is today, is Michael's birthday. I should have led with that. Happy birthday, baby. I love you. You are now officially three years older than me until the end of the month. <laughs> I love being married to an older man. Um, my birthday is at the end of March. So this is a very fun month for us and Jake comes home for spring break. So I'm very happy couple of channel updates that I wanted to tell you about. I am not doing um, March Mayhem this year. It's just too much. Daily vlogs more than once a year, I think, are, are too much. But um, I am going to try, maybe not every day, but in one fashion or another, either Instagram Live, Facebook Live, or even YouTube um, live stream at different times and different days so that no matter where you are in the world or what your work schedule looks like, hopefully you'll be able to grab me in one of those places. Um, so be sure you are following me on Instagram, on Facebook. Obviously you're here on YouTube, but you should subscribe just in case. Um, I will try very hard to like give you a little bit of advance notice when possible, but for the most part, they're pretty spontaneous. The good thing about uh, YouTube live stream is it will tape it and put it up on my channel when it's over so you can go back and watch it. But the other two, I think, once they're over, they're gone. So be sure you are subscribed to all that social media so you don't miss any of that. And I'm gonna throw in Twitter because I'll probably tweet it out as well. And then the last thing is I'm also gonna change up my video schedule and go back to Tuesday, Fridays, two videos a week instead of three, keeping the weekly vlogs where they are, I'd like to have a little more time to do some blogging and spend some time with my kids when they're home on spring break. So I'm gonna try this um, truncated schedule this month and we'll see how it goes. We'll just do it month by month. I'm not gonna make long-term changes. We'll just see how that goes. So anyway, I hope you had a great February. Hope March is even better. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.